Be their spirit is of all types, skill levels, and everything in between. Back to the skateboarding maid. So, you want to get a skateboarding, huh? Well, if you want to start, you're going to need a board. It's proper equipment for a maid. Now, there's a lot that I can cover here, but I'm going to do my best to keep it brief, keep it simple. So, we're just going to go over the basic uh, components of a deck. Now, there's about five components to a skateboard deck. Grip tape, a deck, trucks, wheels, and bearings. Let's talk about these one by one. Grip tape is what will keep your feet stuck to the board and will also obliterate shoes and shoelaces. Ask me, I have a lot of destroyed pairs of both. But basically grip tape is just kind of like a clarified sandpaper sticker to be completely honest. I even use it as sandpaper sometimes in projects if I'm out of sandpaper. But basically, when you're shopping for grip tape, you're going to find two or so brands. You're going to find Jessup, and you'll find Mob. Jessup is known for being a little bit less grippy, which makes it good for board maneuverability. Things like maybe freestyle, if you want to do something like walk the dogs. You need to spin the board under the feet, that helps a lot. And then there's also Mob, which is more grippy. And that's good for things such as ollie tricks, a lot of bowl things where you really need your feet stuck onto the board. That really helps out with that. Uh, you can either get grip tape in fun patterns, or you can do your own designs with paint markers. But be aware if um, you do, those markers are going to die. It's not going to be pretty. They're going to be shredded, man. Decks. There's a ton of variation to this, but at the basic level for everything we're doing today, there's going to be about three or so variations that you're going to see. There is the regular street slash popsicle deck, there's the freestyle slash specialty deck, and then of course there's the longboard. Now, what's the difference between all of these? Longboards, as you may have imagined, pretty long. They're made for riding long distances with less energy and for cruising around. Freestyle and specialty boards are for more specific types of skating and are usually made to help with tricks spin better or stand or balance a certain way and that can be reflected in the shape and size. Uh, see my skateboard for reference of that. But the most common deck by far that you will see is the popsicle deck, also called a street deck. It's what 90% of people think of when they see a skateboard. For the most part, the top and bottom, called the nose and the tail, will have identical angles and will be more or less similar in their rounded shape, with some differences in brands. The next part on our skateboard is our trucks. These are what's going to connect your wheels to the skate deck, and they let you move left and right when you're riding. They're going to be made of full metal, sometimes the metal might vary depending on brands, and there could be a few design differences as well but they all mostly have the same idea to them. The biggest difference can be in color, if they're hollow, the strength, and the feel of the bushings. Bushings, you see, are what lets a truck lean left and right. You're gonna have some variance between some hard ones and some soft ones. I personally ride mediums because I am a very petite person, I think five foot three and 100 pounds, and some people might prefer hard ones because they're a little bit more sturdy, a little bit more stable for things such as pressure flips and just generally turning and bouncing on board. And some people like me might prefer some softer ones because you can move the board a little bit easier when you're tiny. If you're just starting out, I wouldn't worry about changing the bushings in your trucks. Whatever stock ones you have are going to be fine. I rode Thunders, they were great for me. But if you're getting a little bit intermediate and you want to experiment a bit, then absolutely buy some bones, bushings, and give them a go. See how you feel about them. Try out different tricks. See if some are better than others. Rolling up to the next part of our skateboard are bearings. This is what's going to let your wheel roll around. Uh, there's a few options you can get for these. You can get some that have bigger balls in them than others. You can get ceramic or steel. You can get no shields or covers on the bearings. But at the core, they all do the same thing. They spin. Bearings can't be cleaned and maintained. 
but as one of the cheapest parts of a skateboard, most people opt to just replace them rather than maintain them. And now on to the last part of our skateboard setup, and arguably one of the most important, the wheels. So let's break them down. Wheels can affect how you ride, glide, and slide on a skateboard. They come in a variety of sizes, which is referred to in millimeter, and that is measured by diameter. Hardness, which is in durometer, though you're going to see the shorthand of a number followed by the letter A, and they come in a lot of different shapes. Size is going to affect how much speed, stability, and control the wheel offers. The durometer determines how much grip and slide you can have on the ground, and generally how rough of a terrain you can ride over, and how much of that you're going to be able to feel too. As a rule of thumb, a lower durometer can be more grippy and can ride over more rough roads and terrain at the expense of ease for sliding tricks like power slides and reverts, and can affect tricks that involve scooping such as tray flips or shove -its. And the inverse is obviously true for a higher durometer being a little bit more slidey, but at the expense of comfortable riding and maybe just some stability on the board. The shape can be very influential as well. For example, if you're a freestyler, an offset wheel is going to be absolutely essential. This means that the wheel covers the axle nut so the skateboard can stand on the side and remain parallel to the deck which allows them to do tricks that would be otherwise impossible without. The most common type of wheel that you're going to see referred to is the street wheel, which is usually a 52 to 54 millimeter size, 99A, and in a classical or conical shape for a street setup, though there has been recent interest in a softer wheel, a 94 ABEC wheel, which is something that I always recommended well before the trend that how Peralta's dragon wheels have caused. But it's still a very good wheel and I recommend giving it a try. And at its core, that's everything there is to a skateboard setup. There are some variations, some extra things you can get into. Skates for freestyle decks, for example. And I would love to get into that later on. If you guys are interested, just let me know. But with that said, pretty much all I have to say at this point is get your setup and get out there and start shredding. But whether it's a good day or a good night, to a pit. I'll see you in the next one.